Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, today I'm joined with uh, Brian Hammer, who is uh, a Muslim for the last six years. Previously, he was a Roman Catholic, and today he's going to tell us a little bit about his journey. Assalamu alaikum, Brian. Wa alaikum salam. How are you today? Good. How are you? Very good. Alhamdulillah. Now, just tell us a little bit about uh, how did you come to find out about Islam? Well, uh, previous to coming to university, I didn't know anything about Islam. I was very much in the dark. Uh, no one had told me it was good, bad, or anything. It just was. I knew it existed, but that was about it. But when I came to university, uh, a friend in my program was Muslim. And so through her, I was kind of exposed to Islam, but not in a direct way. I mean, she didn't actively say, this is what Islam is about. This is, you know, this is this. You know, kafir and this. Mm -hmm. It was just, yeah. She just lived her life in an Islamic way, and, <clears throat> and so, you know, I kind of became comfortable with, you know, Muslims being people who are not strange or not you know, practicing in some weird way that I'm not used to, and mm -hmm. they seem to have the same kind of morals that I do, and, and so it got me interested in Islam and, you know, wanting to find out, you know, what is this religion that I know nothing about, mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that was kind of my entrance into Islam. What made you, uh, upon seeing some of the actions of Muslims, what made you go a step further and accept Islam as your religion? Well, after after knowing this person for oh, about, I'd say, a little over a year, I guess, or about something like that, I decided that I should read the Quran to find out a little bit more. Um, there was no point in like, asking people, just you know, find out from the source, but it's, what is this religion about? Mm -hmm. So, and then after reading the Qur'an, uh, I mean, it was, it was pretty obvious to me that this was, this was the right path. I mean, there was a few stages in reading, like I read it over a course of a week, but that course of a week, uh, there was a, a great transformation in my kind of understanding of Islam, of the Qur'an, and in like the first few days, in the first third of it, I was very skeptical, and you know, mm -hmm. was this all about it? You know, kind of looking at it with a, a bit of a, of a bias of, you know, this is obviously not the Word of God because, yeah. you know, I was Catholic before and I had my own mm -hmm. beliefs. Uh, but I was immediately caught uh, by the, the style and the tone and how it's you know, first person from the point of view of God and, mm -hmm. and, and the things that were said, it just really caught me off guard. I was like, what's going on here? And then this, by about the middle of it, you know, I was kind of saying, well, you know, this, this has a lot of merit, you know, this deserves some deeper... You know, reflection, really, think about this sort of thing, and then by the last third of it, I was like, yeah, I, you know, I, I think this is the word of God. Alhamdulillah. And so, you know, then I called up my friend, and I was like, okay, so this is the word of God, so I have to follow this, what do I do? And so that was, you know, took shahad, and that was Alhamdulillah. That's it. And uh, even the English uh, translation has that much effect on people who are not Muslim. The Arabic even takes it to another level, and that's something that, as Muslims, we should always be uh, very thankful because it's a, it's a blessing from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yeah, it's true. It, with, I mean, you know, with Roman Catholicism, you have so many levels of translation between you know, what we have now in English and what was originally, uh, yeah, Aramaic or um, uh, like the Old Testament, I guess, was Hebrew. Um, but you know, it's you, know, you have this the original text as it was revealed by God in Arabic. And I can't yet read that, but uh, inshallah I will be able to inshallah. 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 Initially, what was the reaction of your friends and the family and those around you? How did they react? Um, it was... They reacted fairly well, I would say. Uh, my friends, they didn't really treat me any differently, as far as I know. They just kept treating me the same as they always had. Um, and in fact, I had one friend who called me up uh, a few days after I had said the shahada, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know how he found out, and, but he called me up and congratulated me, which I thought was very strange to this day. I still don't know why he did that <laughs> because he is Catholic himself, and uh, but whatever, you know, that was, you know, I, I thought that was oh wow, it was very nice. You know? Yeah, it's a nice gesture, a very nice gesture. But with my parents, uh, it was a little bit different because my mother is very Roman Catholic. And, you know, she brought me up in such a way. I was an altar boy for a, many, many years, and you know, so we were always went to church. We were very, 
very practicing in that manner. And so, <clears throat> my father as well. And so, you know, when she found out, it was all very emotional and the crying and the, what have you done? And, but, uh, you know, once they kind of came to their senses, I mean, they don't think what I've done is right. They don't think I'm on the right path, but, uh, but they respect to a certain degree my decision. You know, when I go home, my mother will cook me turkey bacon, and she won't, you know, she won't feed me pork, and she won't, you know, argue with me about anything. She's, you know, she's, they still love me, and they still accept me okay. to a certain degree. Okay. That's, that's good. Now, uh, now that you've uh, done the shahada and accepted Islam, how has your journey been once you accepted Islam? Uh, well, I mean, people talk about uh, converting or reverting or what have you, mm -hmm. and you know, I don't think any of those terms are they don't seem accurate to what I've experienced. For me it's more like awakening. It's like you know, the veil has been lifted from my eyes. I've I've seen the truth now or you know, it, it maybe rebirth or well that's not the right. But I, I guess awakening or you know. And so I mean the process has been partly a process of, of awakening and realizing what this life is about. And, you know, the way I've been living and seeing it through a better uh, means of judging my actions. Uh, when I was a uh, Roman Catholic, I was very hypocritical of my actions. I mean, I didn't notice at the time, obviously. But uh, once I started evaluating my life from the you know, point of view of, and from an Islamic point of view, uh, you know, I had to really readjust the way I lived and that sort of thing. But the process itself has been uh, definitely gradual. It's not, you know, say that you had to know all of a sudden you're Muslim and you're practicing and mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's uh, well, Allah guides us in, uh, in stages that are easy for us. Mm -hmm. and because, I mean, I think if, if someone came up to you just after you've done the chat and said, you have to do this, you have to do this, yeah. it's a lot. I mean, it's really a completely different way of of living one's life. I mean, I don't know if it's easier if you're brought up into it. I, I've never experienced it, but I know, you know, when you've, you know, I was 20, I see a 20 when I converted. By that point, you know, you have a, a very set way of life and you, know, you have your own religious um, practices and beliefs and your way of viewing the world. And so it takes a long time and a lot of effort to to get out of those habits and to, and to completely change your life, which this time really requires that you really reevaluate your, your concept of the world and of life. And so to do it all at once would be too much of it. I mean, I'm sure people would kind of balk at it and say, well, this is, I can't handle this. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, Allah showed me or gave me guidance and knowledge in stages. Um, like, for example, with, <coughs> with prayers. Uh, I originally... You know, I agreed, okay, yeah, we should, there should be more prayers. And, you know, yeah, and I knew that there was a way of praying uh, that Muslims practice, but I didn't quite understand how they came up with that, like where that came from, because I'd only read the Quran, I didn't really know much about the Hadith and that sort of thing. And so I, I prayed, but it wasn't, it wasn't five times a day, and it wasn't in the manner that Muhammad has taught us. So. But it got me used to to praying more often, more frequently, and with a little bit more sincerity. Mm -hmm. And then, once I was comfortable with that, uh, I realized, you know, I, in my second reading of the Quran, oh yeah, okay, there are it does say that there are five times that you should be praying. I just, there's not in one spot here; they are in the list. But mm -hmm. so once I realized that, okay, now I'm going to pray five times a day, still in my own kind of format. But then once we became comfortable with that, then you know, I found out. How one prays properly, and then, uh, and then uh, I wasn't praying at the specific times during the day. So then, you know, I had this uh, inspiration, I guess, or some sort of guidance. Where one day I just sort of realized that, you know, if I'm if I'm living my life uh, or my schedule, scheduling my life around uh, my daily tasks and needs and you know, going to the movies and dinner with my friends and working on the job. 
and you know, making my prayers fit in with that schedule, kind of fitting them in where they would fit. It, it, I mean, it wasn't, that wasn't uh, the right way to be because, you know, I mean, essentially I'm saying that going to movies and my friends and these sorts of things are more important to me than, than a lot and praising and thanking a lot. And so once I realized that, I said, well, you know, I have to change my life. I have to, you know, I have to live first by a lot and schedule my life on that. And then your everything else comes secondary. Mm -hmm. So, you know, things like that. I mean, it's, it's a very gradual process of you, know, you get used to this, and you get used to this, and you get used to this.